Hi, I'm Rob Goodwin, and I'm pastor at Our Savior's Church here in Palm Springs, California. And I'm honored to be part of this 21 Days Together because I believe all of us need hope and encouragement during this crazy time in our lives. You know, it's such an e uneasy time for all of us. I know that I felt uneasy and scared at times. And in fact, I had my daughter just say to me just the other day that she feels like she's in prison. I bet many of you might feel the same way. I mean, it's been three weeks of shelter in place here in California already, with at least three to four weeks left to go. At least that's what we pray and hope. And we all need hope to get through this time. I'm reminded of something that I find helpful during this time of difficulty. It's called the Stockdale Paradox. Now, the Stockdale Paradox is named after Admiral Jim Stockdale, who was a United States military officer held captive for eight years during the Vietnam War. Stockdale was tortured more than 20 times by his captors and never had much reason to believe that he would survive prison and someday get out and return home to see his wife again. And yet, as Stockdale revealed in the book Good to Great, he never lost faith during his ordeal. He said, I never doubted not only that I would get out, but also that I would prevail in the end and turn the experience into the defining event of my life, which in retrospect, I would not trade. Then comes the paradox. While Stockdale had remarkable faith in the unknowable, he noted that it was always the most optimistic of his prison mates who failed to make it out there alive. They were the ones who said, we're going to be out by Christmas, and Christmas would come and Christmas would go. Then they would say, we're going to be out by Easter, and, and Easter would come and Easter would go. And then they'd say Thanksgiving, and then it would be Christmas again, and they died brokenhearted. What the optimists failed to do was comfort the, confront the reality of their situation. They preferred the ostrich approach, approach, sticking their heads in the sand and hoping the difficulties would go away. I mean, this self-delusion might have made it easier on them in the short term, but when they eventually were forced to face reality, it became too much and they couldn't handle it. Stockdale approached adversity with a very different mindset. He accepted the reality of the situation, but he did so with unfailing hope. See, Stockdale knew of his situation, but rather than bury his head in the sand, he lived with hope. Because of this, he stepped up and did everything he could to lift the morale and prolong the life of his fellow prisoners. He said this, you have, you have to have faith that you will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties, and at the same time must confront the most brutal facts of your current reality whatever they might be. I bet most of you feel like this crisis is getting very old. You're ready to have this whole situation to be over. You came here today looking for encouragement, seeking hope, and desiring to be motivated to greater things in the Lord. You came here looking for help. Well, the Apostle Paul has some words for us today. He says he found the secret to staying encouraged in the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, Paul says these words. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, and the things that are unseen are eternal. Paul says, so we do not lose heart. I mean, that is an amazing statement, isn't it? It seems to me, just from reading what we read in the Bible and what it says about Paul's life, that it would be very easy for Paul to lose heart. But he says, we do not lose heart. Paul's life was anything but easy. He stated it earlier in 2 Corinthians, these words, are they servants of Christ? Am I better one? I am taking talking like a madman, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, and countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. 
A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys I in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers. I toil and hardship. Though many a sleepless night, I hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and part and apart other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Yet in spite of all of those trials, tribulations, and burdens, Paul is able still to say what? I never lose heart. No one here, I don't know if about you, but I know that's hard for me to say. We all stumble from discouragement to discouragement. We all want to quit from time to time. We all want to stop and give no more because we feel that we have given all that we already can. While there are times when living troubles or afflictions, that they, they are behind us, and seeing like leaving them might be the best option, I'm far more interested in reaching the place where Paul says, I do not lose heart. That's where I want to be. I'm far more interested in reaching the place where I can say, I am not faint. I do not lose heart. I believe that place is available to every one of us as God's children, and I believe that place is available for you today as well. What we need and what I need is, a, is to come to a place that Paul came to. He says that though the outer self is wasting away, the inner self is being renewed, that our inner self is being renovated. Every day the inner self is given new strength to face the trials of that day. And while every day brings with it its unique problems, every day also comes with its own measure of grace from the hands of the Father in heaven. And he goes on and states that nothing lasts forever. What Paul is saying is this, that the problems of life that seem so heavy right now, the troubles that seem as if they will never end, the burdens we think will break us under the weight are really just weighty for a moment, he says. He tells us that compared with the eternal weight of glory that we will experience when we arrive home in heaven, well, everything we face here is light and easy. Nothing we face here is worthy to be compared with the glory that we will experience there in heaven with our Lord and Savior. He says that everything in this world is temporal or temporary, it is merely here for a short time and it will pass away. But what we can't see, those things that are ours in heaven, are eternal in nature. They will ever be there. And we will groan for a few days here, but we will rejoice for endless ages there with him. And we will feel pain here for a short time, but we will experience his glory there in heaven forever and ever. See, the secret for not losing heart is maintaining the proper perspective. Asking the Lord to help you get through this time and get your eyes off of what you can see, our present circumstances, and to help us look beyond this world to the glory that awaits us in his presence. To focus on the promises that he gives us, not on the circumstances and where we find ourselves today. And to know that he will never leave us or forsake us, and that one day we will be with him, sharing in his glory forever and ever. I hope today that those words bring you promise as they do for me. And I pray today that this will be something that will turn you around and make you feel like that you can get through anything. So would you join me in prayer? Well, dear Lord, we just thank you for this time. And Lord, we pray that the words that we hear from Paul would be words that strike us so strongly, Lord that, Lord, we don't want to lose heart during these difficult times. That, Lord, we wish to be like Paul, where we can say, Lord, we do not lose heart. And so, Lord, help us not to look to our current circumstance, but to look to the promise that you give us, the promise of the eternal glory that we will have with you. And to know, Lord, that these things we are going through today are just temporary, but the things that you promise us are eternal. So, Lord, help us today. Help us to see your presence here today. Help us as we go through these difficulties as you have helped Paul as well. But Lord, 
Help us to always focus on those promises that you give us of the eternal glory that is there for us. Lord, we say thank you. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for what he's done for us. And Lord, as we say here at Our Saviors, Lord Jesus, through him we have forgiveness, through him we have life, and that changes everything for us. And we say praise God and thank you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless, and may you have comfort, peace, and encouragement and hope today.